What is up Insurgent Ballistic, but you guys can call me Brian. Thank you for checking out this video. Today is kind of a special day because we're going to be doing our very first mouse review on the channel. We've got a pretty interesting one here. Corsair is sent out their Scimitar RGB mouse. It's got some interesting special features, so let's check it out. This mouse is priced at $80, but I've seen it as low as around $70 or $73. Check the description below for a link to this guy if you do want to pick it up. Now, as you can probably tell, this mouse is aimed at MMO and MOBA players. It's got an absolute ton of completely reprogrammable buttons and a very interesting adjustability mechanism. In terms of general aesthetics, it's a pretty nice looking mouse, pretty dialed back in terms of aggressiveness when compared to the M65 and M45 by Corsair. It's much more in line with the Sabre. For color options, Corsair sent out the all black version of this guy. There's also another black version with a yellow accent, the same color scheme you've seen on a lot of their other peripherals like the Corsair Void. Looking at the materials, it's primarily all plastic. It does have an aluminum piece in the bottom center to help balance the mouse. It feels pretty sturdy. It stood up to some torsion on the cable and some semi-ragey gaming. The surface of the mouse is mostly a soft touch plastic where you'll actually be contacting the mouse, but there are some rubberized areas like on the scroll wheel and the ring slash pinky finger platform. All right, now hopping in and taking a look at the specs of this guy. For the weight, this comes in at 147 grams. That's 5.2 ounces, no weight customization, which I think is pretty acceptable at this price point in the target gamer market. For DPI, it has a very wide range of 100 to 12,000 DPI. I don't think anyone would or should use this, but it's there if you want it. I personally tend to stay around 1300 to 1600 for the DPI and change my sensitivity between games in order to kind of get the same type of overall sensitivity across all games. In terms of the sensor and tracking, from what I read, this uses the 3988 optical sensor, which Corsair claims has zero acceleration. And I'm pretty sure this is also the same sensor that they used in the Sabre RGB. For pole rates, it supports 125 Hertz, 250 Hertz, 500 Hertz, and 1000 Hertz. And I primarily test it at that 1000 Hertz level. In terms of buttons, they've got 17 programmable buttons on this thing. There's the left and right click, the DPI up and down, the scroll wheel slash middle mouse button, and 12 side buttons. As I mentioned, all of these are programmable and it does support onboard profiles, so you can use it on a different computer which doesn't have the Q software set up or your saved profiles. Taking a look at ergonomics, this is of course a non-ambidextrous mouse. And taking a look at the size, it's fairly short in comparison to my Logitech mice, which are kind of my mainstays and go-to. It's a much wider mouse than what I'm used to, and definitely wider than some of the other popular MMO mice out there, like the Razer Naga. I have pretty large hands, and I noticed that when held naturally, my middle finger kind of went over the edge of the right click button. For the grip, I think it's very well suited for palm grips. It might be a bit wide for purely claw grippers. I personally use kind of a a hybrid grip where I switch between palm and claw a little bit depending on the situation whether I'm sniping or doing something else in game. As I mentioned it does have those finger wrists and I didn't really like them at first. I use my ring and pinky finger for kind of adding some drag and traction when I want to hit kind of stop shots in FPS games. I was able to get over it but it took a little bit of getting used to. So in terms of performance and tracking it uses large PTFE feet and it slides very very well. The lift off distance is a uh, adjustable with the Q software, but I found the default value suitable for me. In terms of smoothness with gaming, it felt pretty good to use. There was no noticeable lag and it felt very accurate overall. So moving on to the buttons, the biggest feature of this are the 12 side mounted buttons. They offer a ton of customization, especially for games like MMOs, RTSs, and MOBAs. The entire panel that the buttons are mounted on can actually slide forward and back eight millimeters. So this is a pretty cool feature for customization. If you have maybe non-typically sized hands or you just wanna get your mouse to be as comfortable as possible in terms of uh, your thumb position. In terms of the feels of the buttons for the left and right click, I felt like I got a lot better bounce back when clicking the middle of the right and left click buttons. But as I mentioned, holding it naturally, my fingers were much closer to the edge, forcing me to kind of switch up my grip to a claw style more often than I would like in order to get the best clicking speeds. They do a great job of differentiating the four columns with the alternating textures, but I found the gaps a bit small and sometimes hard to feel out. 
I really prefer the super ridgy kind of side buttons on the Logitech G602, which only has six side buttons. And at first, the sheer number of buttons was kind of daunting. But overall, I got used to it after just a couple of nights of gaming with it and was able to find the different keys very, very easily. And I got to say, it was absolutely great having that many different buttons once I got used to it. Basically, you can make it so you don't have to take your fingers off of the WASD buttons at all. You can put everything from reloading, jumping, showing the mini map, VoIP, just everything that you need for first person shooters. As for the tactile feedback on the buttons, but they feel pretty good. They're mechanical, but I'm not sure what type of switch. Because of the design, Corsair had to deal with the fact that this side panel also serves as the primary gripping service for your thumb when you need to lift the mouse, which is very important for people who play on low sensitivities. And overall, I was pretty pleasantly surprised that I had no problems with the buttons engaging when I was picking up the mouse. The scroll wheel has nice and prominent steps. The pressure to click in the middle mouse button was a bit high, meaning I initially kind of missed time some middle mouse button clicks, but I got used to that as well. Looking at the cable, it comes with a 1.8 meter, I'm guessing nylon braided fiber, which stood up pretty well through moving back and forth between home and work and different computers. It comes with this bright yellow accented connector and it actually has a mouse logo on it. So it's very easy for you to find when you're kind of rummaging behind your case, trying to pull things out or switch port. In terms of customization, it has four different LED zones, which are independently configurable. Corsair notes that this offers 16.8 million different colors, so you can color match to anything in your setup. Maybe you have LEDs, which aren't changeable and aren't RGB, so you can match hopefully pretty close to those, or you can just throw an RGB rave if you want to. To make changes to this, you utilize the Q software. It's pretty nice and gets updated pretty regularly. I've been using it along with my Corsair Strafe keyboard for a while now and have no complaints. Everything's pretty easy to find, pretty self-explanatory, and there are a lot of people on the forums who can help you out if you're having any trouble with it. So overall, I gotta say, I had a really pleasant experience using this mouse. I'm glad Corsair sent it out. It's not the perfect mouse for me. I don't think I need quite that many buttons on it since I don't play that many MMOs or MOBAs, but if you do, it can be perfect for you. Also, the form factor is not exactly what I'm used to. I was able to get used to it, but I do always recommend that you try to go to a store like Best Buy or your local PC shop and see if you can get your hands on one to see if it's gonna be good for you. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought of the video and the Corsair Scimitar RGB in the comments below. Did I miss anything? Is there anything in terms of mouse reviews that you wanna see tested? I have a number of different mice coming in from different companies like EBGA and Logitech. So this being my first mouse review, I'd love to get some feedback as to what you guys wanna see in subsequent videos. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't so much, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to the channel if you already haven't to see more content like this. And I have a lot of PC builds, a PC build every month coming up. I've got some more Corsair gear coming up, some keyboards and some headsets, got some other companies sending out stuff. I've got this month's build video coming up in just a few days, so stay tuned for that. I've got some limited edition and collector's edition stuff that I'm gonna be doing unboxings and reviews of. Plenty of content to see. Thank you guys once again. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.